Okay, so this is part two of the uh, series of videos on surface modeling in Fusion 360. In this one, I'm gonna jump right into sculpt mode or T-splines mode so that you can see how to uh, model organic kind of squishy surfaces. And that's that's where we'll spend the rest of our time in these videos. Um, even, I'll also show that even though we're making kind of free form shapes in sculpt mode, we can still have parts of the model that um, adhere to some measurements that we need. So everything isn't just kind of fluid and squishy. Uh, we'll also figure out how to work with sculpt bodies using the edit form command, which is the main command that we use to manipulate uh, the vertices, edges, and faces of those surface bodies. I'll show you some tips and tricks about selecting vertices, edges, and faces, and uh, how, to, how to be able to select what you need. And uh, we'll also look at the different display modes that uh, exist in, in sculpt mode. And finally, we'll just talk about how to turn these into solid bodies, which again, is always our goal when we're working with surface bodies, is to eventually get it to turn into a solid body that we can work with uh, in the, um, with the solid modeling tools that we're used to. Okay, so how do we create uh, surface bodies in sculpt mode? Everything is pretty much under this create menu. We have um, some familiar things, extrude, revolve, sweep, and loft. If you remember from the solid modeling uh, that we do, those four commands are what we use to turn 2D sketches into 3D solid bodies. And generally the way we do it is we use one of these commands and then we select a sketch profile and, and we apply the command to it. We saw that with the surface set of tools, we could apply something like extrude, not to a profile, but to a sketch curve and pull that up as a surface. Uh, here, we actually have more options, I think. We can use sketch curves, profiles, faces uh, as the thing that we're going to extrude. We also have these other features that create kind of primitives. I, generally in the solid modeling workspace, things like create, create box, create cylinder, I try and uh, steer people away from in favor of using sketches. Uh, and then using extruded evolve sweep or loft. But here, um, some of these make a lot of sense. And so uh, it's pretty common to start with, with one of these in the sculpt mode. In this case, just to kind of go through all the different ways, um, I'm gonna use our familiar way of using a sketch. So I'll create a sketch on the top work plane. I will create a circle and make it uh, 30 millimeters. What I'm doing is just creating a vessel, kind of like a vase or a bottle. And I'm gonna just say that I want the top of it to be 30 millimeters in diameter. And everything else that happens after that can be a, a little more free form. Um, so this shows us that we can have uh, really dis discrete or specific uh, dimensions that we work from, even though everything else is sort of free form. So there's my 30 uh, millimeter diameter. Now I could also have started with a cylinder and um, give it a diameter of 30 millimeters, but I'm just gonna do it this way and then use extrude to select that sketch curve that I just made and pull it down, let's say, uh, 18 millimeters, then hit okay. So from this point, I have a surface body uh, and you can see it's purple here instead of orange, but otherwise it looks similar, right? It's not a solid body. Um, so similar to what we saw with the surface tools. So what I wanna do at this point is start sculpting from here. Everything from here down is going to be uh, just free form sculpting in a way. So I'm going to use the edit form command, which turns out to be the most used command within this workspace. If you look under modify, we have a lot of other things like being able to bridge the space from one, uh, one edge to another, uh, to be able to fill holes to um, all, all sorts of things. But edit form is by far the most popular thing, which is why it's up here in the toolbar. So I'll click that. And then um, typically what we wanna do is select either a vertex, an edge or a face or a combination of them. And what we'll do is uh, if I double click, I can select this entire loop of edges. Uh, otherwise I'd be selecting maybe an individual verte vertex or uh, maybe just a single edge. So just to give you an idea, this triad here tells us, allows us to do everything. It allows us to uh, rotate that thing. It allows us to rotate it on three axes, of course. It allows us to move it on uh, any of the three axes. 
uh, and it allows us, so those are the arrows, it allows us to resize, it allows us to move in this kind of freeform way, uh, or to move, you know, so instead of just moving along one axis, we can use this to move along different axes. Uh, we can also cause it to grow in a uniform way by using the center part. So you can experiment a bit with this, but you can see that you, you're able to start making this really take on any shape and uh, it's, it can also get out of control really quickly. So if I hit cancel here, uh, it only goes back so far. And you can see, again, we don't have items in the design history. So I do use undo quite often in, um, in this workspace. Let's uh, undo all the way back to right, right before we extruded, right after we extruded. So let me show you one other thing that we can do in edit form. Like I said, we can double click and select an entire loop of uh, edges, and then I could move it up or down. But one other thing I can do is it says here uh, in the tooltip, Alt key to extrude. Uh, now I'm on a Mac, so it's the option key. But if I hold down option and pull, what I get is another set of separate faces. So these faces are um, uh, kind of a new row of faces. And um, what I can do is now I, if I manipulate, let's say I grow this set of uh, this, this loop of edges, uh, you can see that it doesn't affect the top one. It affects the one right above it, this loop here of edges, but it doesn't affect the top one. So there's kind of a, a, enough distance that it, um, it's able to uh, not affect this part up here, which I did want to keep at 30 millimeters. So I'll continue in this way. If I hold down Alt or Option again, I can bring down a whole new set of, um, of faces. And, you know, with any time you're involving curves, whether you're using uh, splines in a sketch, uh, it would probably be the same in Illustrator. You want to have the minimal number of uh, vertices and extra extra faces here because the more uh, the more we add the more wonky these curves can get so you can see this curve already doesn't feel as fluid as it did a moment ago so maybe what I really meant is for this to be kind of the the body of the vase and since there isn't much movement in that part uh, maybe this is a water bottle instead right so um, in this part I don't need as many uh, edges going across because there's not as much uh, curvature. So um, now I'm I need some curvature near the bottom, maybe where it actually starts to tuck in. And so um, now I've got something that looks uh, I don't know. Maybe it looks close to what I wanted. I don't have to stick with this edge that I selected. I can kind of go back and uh, select this loop of edges and maybe uh, grow that. Or um, the other thing I can do is selecting faces, edges, and vertices have different effects. And so I am trying to keep everything symmetrical here. So I don't really want to grab this and start uh, pulling it out. But you can see what it would look like if I pulled just that face out. Uh, that has a different effect than pulling an edge out. So that's me pulling the face out. Let me, um, oh, I pulled it back in. Let me hit cancel. And let me... Um, go back into edit form and instead pull an edge out and you'll see what it does. It's kind of a sharper effect. It's pulling the edge, which definitely does affect all of the faces that surround it, but uh, it's a different effect. If I pull just a single vertex, uh, you'll see that again, it's even more localized. So it's just that uh, is getting pulled out, but it does affect everything around it. That's good for us, and uh, we, but we do have to pay attention to how it's affecting the other parts, I guess. So um, the, the other thing you can do is if we select a face, for example, and choose edit form, I can hold down option again, and I can start moving in this direction. So maybe there needs to be a, a handle of some kind. That would be a, a way that I could start doing that. So I'll, I'll hit cancel again. And so I've got base, my basic form. I'm trying to keep this really simple. I don't have a top or a bottom. Um, I'd like to make the bottom just sort of rounded at the bottom. Uh, and so I can start using some of the other tools here like fill hole. So again, I'll double click to get the, uh, the whole loop selected. And then you can see there are different options here for how to close that off. And uh, I'm just going to choose uh, fill star. And if I choose maintain crease edges, it will actually make a flat bottom. So that's one way that we could just say this should have a flat bottom to it. But I'm interested in kind of that bit of curvature that's there. At this point, the, my next step would be um, to go ahead and 
somehow turn this into a solid body. Now we know of different ways to do it. Uh, if I just finish form right now, if it had enough faces to actually enclose it, Fusion 360 will turn it into a solid for us. But in this case, if I hit finish form, you'll see that it turns it just into another kind of surface body. And it looks a bit different, but it's, you know, it has different faces that make it up. But I can still go back and double click on uh, the purple box and make changes to it. So um, what I'm gonna do is just here, I'm gonna create, or, sorry, modify and choose thicken in the same way that I did before. This is a good opportunity to show you um, something about selecting, right? So if I select, uh, I, I have different ways of selecting here. And if I press one, the shortcut key one, it'll go into window selection mode. Two is free form, three is paint. So let me just change to each one in turn. I'll choose number one obviously is how we select, uh, sorry, let's skip the thicken, but let's use edit form. Uh, if I drag from the left, anything that comes in contact with that rectangle will get highlighted. So that includes faces, edges, vertices, and it also includes the things on the back because those are essentially in that range. If I go from the left and start dragging right, it's a different color square, and only the things that are in that rectangle get selected. Again, it's things that are on the back as well. Uh, we can change that if we wanted to change the selection filter so it only included vertices. Uh, I could select now and it'll only include, include those that are in the, uh, in the range that I selected. Um, and all. So there's also um, the ability to change to different selection modes. So freeform selection is kind of like make a loop, but it's the same thing. If I drag from the left, from the right to the left, it gets everything. If I drag from the left to the right, it only gets what's inside the loop. And then finally, uh, paint selection, which is literally just kind of painting the things that you want to select. What you'll have, what you can happen in Fusion 360 is if you're uh, banging away on numbers because you're entering a number or something, and then you're in the wrong uh, place in the interface, you might hit the number one or two or three, and you'll see these change. So one, two, and three switch between the different modes. So often you'll do it by accident, but otherwise those are handy shortcut keys. So uh, that's a bit about selection. One last thing about selection is that you can choose uh, selection filters and say, only I only want to choose certain things here, edges, faces, vertices, and that will stick. So this, this selection filter is just for this dialogue. But uh, if I if I change them here, then that'll, that'll stick until I change it back. So all kinds of ways to select those three different elements, vertices, edges, and um, faces. Uh, let's go back to getting out of here, getting to the point where this can be a solid body. So we've seen the ways that that might happen. If I go to the modify menu and hit thicken, I can choose the T-spline body and say how thick I want it to be. Now, one thing you'll notice is it kind of gives me this different visual of how this thing uh, looks right now. It's added some, like a control box around it. And that's the last thing I'm gonna show you. But for now, let me, um, let me actually give it some thickness. Let's say it's two millimeters thick, or let's go with something thicker. Five millimeters thick. Um, and so now I've got, if I turn on a uh, section analysis to be able to see inside it, I can see that it's a, um, it's, it's essentially got an interior, but, uh, it's still a surface body. So I'll hit, okay, I'll finish form. And now you can see it's turned into a solid body and this is actually solid meat in there. <laughs> um, so this is this, we, now we've seen already some, that we might use uh, thicken as a way. We can also use those other methods. Uh, we could go into the surface workspace and cap it off using a patch. It's a surface body that we created in, in uh, T-Spline, so we can use it using those uh, through those surface tools as well. Uh, one last thing I want to show here is that this now, when I thickened it, it actually created faces, vertices, and edges for this interior and for the top. So there's no reason I couldn't uh, modify that as well. So I'll hit edit form here. Maybe what I'll do is just click this bottom face. This is a good example. And what I'll do is move it up. And so I'm actually changing the shape of the inside. When I hit okay, um, it's a little odd because it's showing me 
the uh, the body that happened afterward, right? Like this is looking like a solid body now. So there's a weird kind of time warp that happens when you uh, go in, when you turn it into a solid body and then go back to T-splines. But when I hit finish form here, we'll see it take effect. And you can see what I've done is actually independently change the interior faces from the, out, the outside faces. So maybe I have a heavy bottom to this bottle so that it doesn't tip over as much. Um, that's something you can't do using modify shell, which we've done before to make something that's vase like by just shelling it. But that has a consistent thickness all the way around. This is a way that you could actually make, uh, change the interior independently of the exterior. So that's interesting and new. One last thing that I want to show you in sculpt mode, if we go back in, uh, we saw for an instant when we did the thicken that it, um, it created that kind of control box around it. That's actually a way that we can uh, change. If we go under utility display mode, we can change the way that this appears. So the first one actually shows it as boxes. Um, so, okay, this is getting disturbing because we're seeing both the solid body and the, um, and the, T splines body at the same time. Let me hit finish form, hide this body, and then go back. So now that's so. Like I said, it's a weird time warp. So now at least it doesn't show the the uh, solid body overlaid. But if I go into utilities and display mode, you can see that it, it can show me box mode. It can show me kind of the smooth display, which we're used to, or it can show something in between where it has this kind of control frame structure on the outside. This can be useful. Let me turn off that. Uh, section analysis. This can be useful because uh, we now can select those as the things we want to change. Rather than selecting the individual vertices and faces, we're able to kind of have like a different way of selecting the parts that we want to change. Um, similarly with box mode, if you have something really complex with a lot of curves, this can kind of really clearly show you where there's something weird happening. And so even though the, uh, the curvy fluid uh, display is nice, sometimes you have to resort to box mode to identify a problem. Particularly if we do something like this, where I make something uh, that can't really exist, right? So I've taken that vertex and I've actually pulled it through to the other side. I'll hit okay, it'll let me do it. But when I try and hit finish form, it'll tell me that it's not possible because something in here is not right. <laughs> so it says T-spline surface self intersects. That means one surface is going through another. So when I hit undo uh, and go backward, I can finish form and um, turn that body back on and, and it did, it, it worked. And so, just so you know, um, occasionally box mode will just appear when there's something wrong. It'll say it'll snap right into box mode and it'll say, take a look at this. There's something weird. And uh, box mode is the best way to see it. That's it. I think uh, I'll move on to the next thing, which is uh, some specific examples in T-splines and different techniques for making T-splines bodies.